All right, so we're checking out these ND filters from KNF Concept. They're the Nano X series for the DJI Avada, but they also will work with the camera from the uh, DJI O3 Air Unit. And you can see I have one attached here on the camera from the O3 Air Unit. This one's the ND8. I um, deliberately left out the manual camera settings in my original DJI O3 review so that I could cover it in a separate video and uh, specifically having to do with ND filters because obviously um, in most conditions you don't want to use manual settings unless you have an ND filter because generally it's going to be too bright and um, yeah, the shutter speed is going to be way too high and even you know when using auto settings the shutter speed is going to be way too high, high without an ND filter so this is kind of why if you want to get better footage with your O3 camera you really do need ND filters. And this is a kind of common knowledge amongst most um, camera people and also people that fly FPV as well, that you do need ND filters of some kind to reduce that shutter speed to a more reasonable level to get that more natural looking motion blur, etc. There's lots of videos on why you would want to go with an ND filter. Uh, I'm not gonna get into ex all of those reasons here, but for the most part, you know, if you're looking for specific reasons as to why you would need it, um, you could probably look for other videos on YouTube that will probably give you a better explanation than me. And one of the big reasons, uh, one of the big reasons people use in their videos is the 180 degree shutter rule. I don't particularly adhere to that strictly um, because uh, we use things like um, uh, post stabilization, like uh, Real Steady Go. Um, gyro flow. There's also built-in stabilization like Rocksteady on the O3 and also HyperSmooth on the GoPro. So the 180 degree rule in my opinion doesn't apply strictly. Now this, there's going to be a lot of debate on that. I'm sure there's going to be people commenting and raging about not following the 180 degree, 180 degree rule and um, that being incorrect. I think it's subjective. I think you can get better results by getting closer to 90 degree shutter instead of 180 degree shutter. So if you guys are don't know what 180 degree shutter, 90 degree shutter, et cetera means, there are other videos on how to explain that better than I can, but basically uh, 90 degree shutter is double the shutter speed of 180 degree shutter. So in the footage that I'm gonna be showing you, it's all 4K 60 or 60 frames per second. So the 180 degree rule says that you should be shooting at um, one over 120 for double the frame rate. So that would be the 180 degree rule. And the 90, if you're following the 90 degree shutter, then it would be uh, one over 240. So I am gonna show you a couple examples here, but before I do that, I do just wanna quickly show you what these uh, ND filters look like. So, it just comes in a box like this, and there's a little case in here, a plastic case, and inside there are the ND filters, and they're really tiny. Come in this nice little foam uh, cutout here to hold them in place. You get six here in this pack. It's, uh, it shows you here on the box. You get an ND4, an ND8, 16, 32, a UV, and a circular polarizing filter. So the UV is, or is this one here is basically uh, clear, and you know another thing that you'll notice is that these can be used as pretty good lens protectors to protect the main camera lens. So if if you break one of these, that'll probably get damaged first before the main camera lens. If you want to save that, but of course these aren't necessarily that cheap either. So even when I don't use an ND filter if it's too dark, I typically put the UV filter on there just for a little bit of extra protection. This is the polarizing filter. That's good for situations where you have a lot of reflections, like if you're flying over water. And then uh, over here we have the four. This is the eight that I have on here, 16 and 32. Now, I did a, um, in the main review video, I did show you my uh, other filters that I got from, uh, this is from Freewell. And they sent me their four filters as well as the UV and circular polarizing filter. But they, this set of four comes it starts, instead of starting at ND4, it starts at ND8. So it goes from 8, 16, 32, and 64. So if you want even um, a darker image, 64, the higher the number, the darker the, the, the shading. 
is, and you get a darker image. So if you need 64, then I don't believe uh, KNF offers that. But the uh, Freewells don't offer the ND4. So if you need less, then you have to go with this KNF. Now, I'll I'll show you them side by side here at the end of the video. I'm not going to really. This is not really about the filters themselves, but I do want to show point out something here about these filters that that they're very they're very thin and they use the edge of this metal framing here on the top and the bottom to hold or just to lock themselves into the camera itself so there's a on the camera uh, the body itself there's like this plastic on top and bottom and there's little notches in there that hold the filter in place so these are pretty easy to get in but because for safety reasons they don't want them vibrating out they make the fit really tight so they are a bit challenging to get out, which is I think I think is a good thing. So something to be aware of. Um, you will probably need some good fingernails to get them pop to pop them off. But I think it's better to have them harder to pop off than not, and have them fall off when you're flying. Anyway, just to show you the uh, way to access the manual camera settings, you're going to swipe up from the bottom on your touchpad. That's going to bring up the manual camera settings. And uh, you basically have to switch from auto to manual. And you'll have things in there like your you can adjust your ISO, your shutter speed, your um, auto ISO max value, for example, is one you can change. Uh, for me, the default settings I'm going to be using here are 4K 60 frames per second. I'm using the ultra wide field of view uh, with rock steady turned on. Uh, I'm locking my white balance to 5500K. That's pretty much recommended. You probably want to lock your white balance. And I'm also filming in D cine like mode, which is going to give you a low contrast and low saturation version of the video. Now you may be asking why I'm filming in 4K 60, 16 by 9 mode, ultra wide with rock steady turned on here. And basically I have to cover that in a separate video regarding the different field of views. It's a little bit of a longer video. So if you're interested in that, um, yeah, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and get that video out sooner than later, but that's a kind of a different topic. But I think for most people, this is the, these are the settings you're gonna want to go with to get the, bet, the widest field of view and the best results. So for this first example, I have the shutter at 1 over 160, not at 1 over 120. So I actually prefer something a little bit less than um, 180 degrees. And also, this the, just the lighting conditions in this day are pretty bad. Um, we have a sort of a cloud, partly cloudy situation with the clouds going in and out of the sun. So the lighting conditions are just changing all the time. Um, in a lot of these cases, I actually prefer to uh, record in auto mode with an ND filter. And I'll show you that at the end, but uh, you can see the differences here. I have the, in this first example, I have the ISO locked at 100 and the shutter at 1 over 160. And the, I'm using an ND8 filter. And the results are, you know, uh, they're, for, the, for these lighting conditions, I think the ND8 is a little bit too dark for that shutter speed. Uh, I did try an ND4 earlier, but it was actually too bright. So it's kind of this is another reason why uh, using auto settings can be a little bit more helpful for these kind of situations. But yeah, the the results are a bit dark, especially when you're flying into the sun. Uh, and so I don't think that 1 over 160 is the ideal shutter for this specific lighting condition. Now I did an, another attempt here where I in, increased the shutter speed to one over 240, which is a 90 degree shutter rule. And this is actually these this is actually better in my opinion. So it's the ISO still locked at 100, and the the image is definitely a lot more brighter. Um, you can turn on auto ISO and set an uh, auto uh, or an auto ISO max limit here, which I did not do in this example. That will help in the situations where things get kind of dark. But as you know, when the ISO goes up and those, when those dark situations occur, you get more noise in the video. So I would say, you know, maybe set uh, ISO to auto, which will fluctuate between 100 and your ISO max and set the max to say 400 or 800, depending upon your lighting conditions. That'll probably produce some pretty good results. And I usually go for either somewhere like around a, 
an, around a 90 degree shutter rule. So like one over 240, one over 200, one over 160. That's typically what I would do if I'm going to do with a fixed, if I'm going to go with a fixed shutter. Um, but I think that probably here, you know, this third example, this is what I would typically do is just uh, go with like an ND filter that gives me approximately a 90 degree shutter and um, just use auto settings, which will let the ISO fluctuate. And then I actually set the, I, I think in this example, I set the I, ISO max to uh, 400 so I don't get too much noise. And then you get a variable shutter that's gonna fluctuate around a 90 degree shutter. So this 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 results here, I think is probably the best. This is uh, the, the, like my third or fourth attempt. I set um, the ISO max to 400 and just set everything to auto. And this gives you, I think, the best picture overall in terms of like flying around with decent amount of motion blur, but not a whole lot of motion blur. Now, the reason I don't adhere to the 180 degree rule because of the um, stabilization artifacts might show up. If the if you have the shutter set so that the image is a little bit too dark and you have a little bit too much motion blur, you're going to get um, what are called stabilization artifacts in the video where uh, weird vibrations show up in the video that aren't actually vibrations, they're just stabilization artifacts due to the motion blur and the stabilization trying to do stuff in the background that shows up as that what looks like vibrations. And that's that's the reason why I don't adhere to the 180 degree rule. I typically go somewhere between 180 and, and 90 on the, sh on the shutter. Um, and as I said, I usually just go with auto settings and put an indie filter on. Um, if it were a brighter day than this, like less clouds, I might go to an 8016. If it's like really super sunny, like no clouds at all, and super sunny, like on a summer day, the sun, sun overhead, maybe a lot of like reflections in the in the off of water for example or snow then i might go to like nd32 or even nd64 but i typically don't like to go too dark on the image because then the shutter gets too slow and then you get too much motion blur and then those uh, stabilization artifacts start showing up in the video all right so i'm not going to get a lot of questions about what are the differences between the different nd filter brands out there i only have these two right now the ones this one here on the left is from KNF, and the one here on the right is from Freewell. There's a number of other producers of ND filters for the Avada and the O3 camera out there. I don't can't really see how good or bad the other ones are. The cost of the KNF is you know, it's pretty significantly less than the ones from the, uh, from Freewell. So this set of six here is going to cost fifty nine dollars, um, whereas if you get the six from Freewell. It's going to be $99. Now, if you buy them individually from Freewell, it's actually going to cost you more. Uh, I think they're $20 to $30 each. So it's going to be like, I think if you buy them separately, it's like $130. So like double the cost of the KNF. But, you know, in terms of the glass and the quality of filter, they seem pretty similar to me. The, the, the way the frame looks, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit thinner on the KNF. So... Uh, you can you can kind of see the difference. The one on the right, the the, the uh, Freewell one, the one on the left is the KNF. It's thinner in terms of the metal framing. The glass can't tell if it's any thinner or not. Um, that's the this is the front, and here's what the back looks like. And you can see that uh, the locking mechanism. It's very similar. They almost look identical, just that the the metal frame is a little bit thinner on the KNF. So perhaps a little bit lighter. Maybe that's where they're shaving the, um, the cost and to make it a little bit less. Anyway, it's gonna cover for this video. Hopefully that'll help you out in terms of how to use your manual settings and to get better image quality out of your video from the O3 camera. Links will be down in the video description if you wanna check out this filter. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.